Hi, I'm Anthony, and welcome today to Cyberio.it. Today we'll be discussing choosing different uh, components and different types of specifications for different computer setups. I'm your local subject matter expert here for A+, so let's go ahead and get started. So when we're picking a computer for different uses, we need to realize that different computers have different needs. And different computers have different requirements as far as what type of processors or how much RAM or what type of connections that they have. And especially if we're building our own computer, we want to sort of break that down and determine what we need before we buy a computer and then try to run certain programs on it and we run into issues. So let's take a look at some of these different types of computers and some of our best specifications, our best practices for determining and creating an optimum, optimum performance environment for these different computers. Now, when we're talking about our graphic CAD, CAM design workstations, um, we're talking about computers that uh, assist us with computer-aided design or computer-aided computer -aided manufacturing. These are types of computers that you'll see commonly in graphic design offices using uh, high versions of Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, or sometimes you'll see them in computer, ma computer manufacturing offices. They're rendering 3D models of different cars, and they're pushing that information to manufacturing computers that use those 3D models to laser cut dyes of, uh, out of metal. And this is all done automatically, and it's all done with the computer, but we need certain, com uh, we need certain components within these computers in order to keep us from running into frustrating issues or running out, uh, running out of resources on our computer. The first thing we want to take a look at in a computer for our graphics computers is going to be a fast processor rendering. So we want a powerful processor. We want a processor that is running at 3.0 gigahertz or faster and has, let's say, at least six cores and eight megabytes of total cache. And of course, we want a processor which supports 64 bits. Now, breaking this down, our 3.0 gigahertz, um, that is our uh, clock speed. That's the speed at which our processor can actually process instructions. It can uh, make decisions and it can make those calculations one at a time. So we want that to be high so that it can quickly go through those different processing. We want six cores because, again, the more cores we have in a processor, it's like having multiple uh, CPUs, but they're all built into one single processor chip. Uh, the more cores we have, the more the more in handlers that we have for processing instructions, uh, the more different chips we have. And our eight megabytes total cache, we remember that our cache is where our computer CPU um, can actually temporarily store memory and it can quickly retrieve that memory a lot faster than going all the way out to our RAM to retrieve it. You can place it there in our eight megabyte cache uh, very temporarily and it can retrieve that very quickly rather than having to go all the way out to our memory. And our 64 bit um, our 64 bit computer is going to allow us to have a higher amount of memory in our computer later and it helps us with instructions processing and um, addressing memory. So that's going to be our powerful processor requirements and that'll help us when we're running those different graphic design programs and say uh, compile rendering those 3D images that'll make that a lot fast uh, a lot faster because we have that powerful processor. Now in addition to our powerful processor we're also going to want our high-end video. When we're talking about our high-end video we're talking about a uh, graphics card which allows us to render graphics directly from our applications, especially 3D graphics. So if we're using this computer um, to render 3D models of a cars, 3D models of houses, we're going to need that video card which allows us to render 3D graphics. Now with our 3D cards, um, we want that to be a card that we can plug into our PCI, PCIe ports to give us that faster connection and our uh, that more accessible um, our more accessible ports and we sometimes will see those plugged into as well as our AGP ports our accelerated graphics ports now remember when we're talking about our accelerated graphics ports our accelerated graphics ports can actually borrow memory from our computer uh, and that will allow us to have a little bit of an easier time when we're talking about 3D rendering and using that memory in order to assist with the video graphics and the 3D rendering. So for our high-end video card, some of our technical specifications, we want to see if we can get one with at least a GPU 
RAM of two gigabits or better. So that's going to be the dedicated RAM for the GPU for the graphics processing unit. We want one that's optimized for DirectX 11 or uh, OpenGL. And again, these specifications change over time. Um, three years from now, these won't be high in, these may not be as high in video cards as they are now because uh, more programs become more intensive. They require more processing. They require better video cards and better processors. So it's definitely, it's worthwhile to do research before investing in these video cards or investing in computers. Um, and additionally, we probably want a high end video card that will support um, at least two displays for our user. Um, those two displays are going to make it a lot easier when we're moving things around between two screens, when we're making those uh, video edit or we're making those graphic edits and we're making the different design changes, it becomes a lot easier to actually be able to move that between two displays. The increased workspace there does help us when we're talking about how much multitasking we can do.